And now for the Monero development segment. All right, let's pull up. Tigun. All right, Tigun. Tigun, good morning. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, man? Nothing much. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. This, this, nice. this is this is good. Atomic swaps, perfect. Yeah, well, um, this is actually in relation to last week. I saw Samurai Wallet put out a. Um, they are working on atomic swaps in their. Yes. Yeah, not in their wallet. I guess we want to say because they're still a Bitcoin only wallet, but they're working on getting swaps going between Monero and Bitcoin. So I just want to talk about some of the. Uh, atomic swap like privacy dangers you would run into if you're a Monero user interested in Bitcoin, I guess, from via atomic swaps. Because I honestly haven't studied Bitcoin in like forever. Because like, you know, uh, <laughs> but um, there are some dangers that we can look at historically from a developmental standpoint that you will run into um, swapping into Bitcoin. Just privacy concerns. And also just, I want to get rid of this myth that you can swap into Monero and sort of get the privacy benefits and then swap out of Monero. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to keep it really quick and really short. Um, All right, perfect. Yeah, because then we have Particle, who's going to be talking about their their bi-directional atomic swap solution. Yeah, I didn't want to cover the technical parts of the atomic. You have the experts in the room. So I'm just going to go over the privacy concerns. So basically, re recently, Samurai Wallet was like, we're working on atomic and app atomic swaps between Bitcoin and XMR. The idea is that you have the semi wallet which is a bitcoin only wallet and then i believe there's some um monero wallet I, i forgot what name of it but they're working on getting the monero side of it and you can swap back and forth between monero and bitcoin essentially and you might ask who's who semi wallet semi wallet is amazing they actually have a monero talk of course everyone in the crypto space has a <laughs> anything <laughs> remotely related to privacy has a monero talk and they're really cool they um they're um, really great guys in the bitcoin space fighting a good fight um one of the only even zip, one of the last places privacy is even trying to be attempted to in the Bitcoin space. So really good guys, you know, I'm not a, a Bitcoin guy and they're not, you know, they're, they're Bitcoin devs, but they're really good. But so I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, bash anyone or say anything. Oh, look at these Bitcoins. They're like actually one of the only last true Bitcoiners in my opinion, but that's another issue. And one of the, the, the to keep it short and sweet, the big issue with this, if, if you look at atomic swap, if you were the guy thinking, I have Bitcoin, I'm going to swap into Monero, I'm going to get some privacy and swap out back into Bitcoin. That doesn't really work and historically because that would be what you would call chain hopping. And even before atomic swaps, chain hopping is when someone, let's say, someone steals some Bitcoin and they want to keep it private. What, um, what they would do is they would hop into a different chain and then hop back into Bitcoin, essentially. And this has actually resulted in historically people being traced. And if you remember the WannaCry hacks a while ago, there's this really beautiful art article written by Nick Bax, and it goes into how they actually track people across chains. And this and this attack vector wouldn't really change with atomic swaps, right? Because you would still hop into big, um, from Bitcoin into Monero, which is fine for privacy. The issue is when you hop back out, you can be traced essentially because Bitcoin is a transparent chain. So there's that. And... To give a visual example here of the top you have a bitcoin transaction all the amounts are here the addresses are here and that below you have a monero transaction which is sort of encrypted you could think so pretty much um monero doesn't give bitcoin privacy there's a lot of this myth has been around for a while i would say and not anyone like not somewhere while it doesn't promote this no i know that actually is a dev promotes this idea that if you have bitcoin you can swap into monero and get privacy The recommended way if you actually want to get privacy is just to use Monero. You know, <laughs> there's not much you you can't hop from a transparent chain into a private chain back into a transparent chain and have any real hope, at least historically. Right. With chain hopping, and things like that for privacy. But atomic swaps are generally good. One of the main two case um, use cases they have right now is um, Whirlpool users who have change in Bitcoin, essentially. And you would get Bitcoin change in this context by using their mixing services, but having a little bit left over, right? So you have some left over that isn't worth mixing. You could swap it into Monero and have Monero, you know? And then the number two scenario is if you're a current Monero user and you want to pay for a service in Bitcoin, essentially, you can use atomic swaps to do it. 
because right now you might use something like Cake Wallet or Trocador app, which is um, centralized custodial for a, a short time period, right? But with Atomic Swap, you could make it non-custodial, or atomic secure decentralized in that way. And just to keep it short, uh, how much Bitcoin do y'all think is in the Samurai Wallet mixing pool? And the Samurai Wallet mixing pool is pretty much like, the only way you're going to have any Bitcoin privacy if you if you hope for it. So how much y'all think is in it right now? And it's pretty much all it mixes the coins together and it gives pretty much a massive coin join. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. What y'all think? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, one million. I'm going to guess yeah, one million. Ma- one million? Yeah, I go with a million, actually. Okay, let's see how close you are. I don't think one bill- people that use it. One billion. Well, the answer is actually 251 million. So if you said 1 million, you're... Wait. Yeah, you said 251 million, actually, is the answer. So let's go back. Um, 200... Yeah, so I think this is the closest answer here. 100 million. Okay. That's way yeah. more than I would have thought. Yeah, no. A wow. lot of people want privacy. But in retrospect, Monero's um, market cap is $2 billion, so... <laughs> <laughs> and that's like not all really automatic com- yeah yeah not really comparable in that context but you know when uh, some of our guys are uh, good stuff bitcoin every day is heading down a path that's not good and there's some of the last people still standing within that path so i think their work is okay, good. the same right like wallet people are mm-hmm. pretty cool yeah they're cool you know a bitcoin it is what it is you know <laughs> not gonna do much on that but they're great people they do really good, good stuff you know if i was a bitcoiner i would be using this you know really cool stuff but that pretty much wraps up my end oh my end, very much is a great, this really good article tracing wanna try wanna cry 2.0 mineral transactions. It is a beautiful example of what goes wrong when you try to use different chains, hop back and forth and get privacy. Like you want privacy, just use Monero. You know, you don't don't swap back and forth, but really great article. It is actually tracks like North Korean hackers through um different um non-KYC exchanges and how they were still caught. It talks about some different um, nuances in Monero. It's like a beautiful art article. You can Google it if you want to learn some more. But I think that's pretty much it for me. Once again, uh, Sir My Wallet, a good guy. They have a interview with, I believe, Doug here, and also some Monero core devs here. Really great guys. You know, doing some cool stuff with Bitcoin, and Bitcoin, you know, is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, and yeah, stick around because we're gonna now get deeper into atomic swaps. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. And stick around, maybe you could ask some questions. Mm-hmm. All Good right. Good stuff to you. Thank you so much, as always. Yeah, of course. Thank you, G Dune.